and I look forward to supporting your nomination. Thank you, and congratulations to your family. Thank you, Senator. I was deferring to the Senator from California, but Senator Franken, I think you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Ray, for meeting with me uh, yesterday. I enjoyed our, our meeting. Uh, it was a good meeting. Uh, actually, uh, Senator Tillis asked a kind of question I w wanted to ask, which was what the role going forward of the FBI is distinct from former Director Mueller's uh, as the special prosecutor would be. You answer, answered that question. But I'm glad that you answered that question saying that uh, part of what the FBI will be doing is uh, working so this doesn't happen again. Because I think that we, we got to keep our eye on that ball because 2018 will be upon us soon and we don't want this to happen again. Now before I turn to my questions I'd like to first thank Senator Hatch uh, for his work on the Child Protection Improvement Act and I would thank you for um, uh, your commitment to help us get that that bill passed and done. Uh, this is, uh, it helps organizations like organizations that do mentoring for kids to get background checks so that vulnerable people, and this is also for people who work with, with uh, seniors or for the elderly, they should be able to effectively screen uh, their workers and their volunteers to make sure uh, that they are trustworthy. So thank you for your commitment on that. This is something we've been trying to get done for a while and I have these groups that are doing unbelievably great work asking for this and I, I thank you for that. I, and uh, for the record on, on S Senator Graham, I think he would have made a great FBI agent <laughs> and I'm glad that also that he's in the Senate. Uh, that said, I don't know about the article, the January Politico article that suggests that someone in the Ukraine um, wanted to pass some information off to the Clinton campaign. Um, but I, I, I think I know the answer to this. I think you know the answer to the question. Did the Ukraine, or Ukraine rather, hack uh, the RNC's database? Did they hack Kellyanne Conway, uh, did, did the Clintons want to build a hotel in Kiev? I think there's a big difference here, and we know what Russia did, and that's, um, that's a big deal. And thank you for saying that part of your job is, uh, is, uh, is making sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, we here, of course, have oversight over the FBI. Uh, will you come before us periodically so that we can do our oversight? Uh, yes, Senator. I expect I'll be seeing a fair amount of the committee if confirmed. Mm -hmm. And likewise, do you think that Attorney General Sessions should come before us periodically so we can exercise our oversight? Well, Senator, I don't speak for the Attorney General and his his appearances, but I'm sure he values this committee having been a member of it and, and would need to appear before it periodically. Yeah, I agree. Um, let me ask you about when, when Director Comey was fired, uh, one of the justifications was made was that the Director Comey had lost the confidence of rank and file FBI agents. Um, You've known Jim Comey for a long time, and you've worked alongside him, and you, you know a good number of people at the FBI back from your time at the Justice Department. Is that your experience, talking to them? Well, Senator, I, I, obviously I haven't done a scientific sampling of the 36,000 men and women of the FBI. but Why not? People... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I uh, appreciate your patience with me on that one, but, uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but, uh, but all the people that I've spoken with at the FBI, um, from senior people down to rank and file people, strike me as the same FBI I've always known and loved, which is people who are mission focused, who believe in what they're doing, uh, who are going to follow the facts and the law wherever it takes them, 
Uh, they've got their head down, their spirit up, and they're charging ahead. Now, if there's somebody somewhere who feels differently, that, that could be, but I haven't met those people okay. recently. And you don't think Director Comey is a nut job, right? Uh, that's never been my experience with him. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, I, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, uh, if you are asked uh, in some kind of setting by uh, the president uh, to stop an investigation of somebody, um, aside from saying no, uh, would you report that to us? Well, I would report it to the Deputy Attorney General, assuming he wasn't already sitting there with me hearing it, uh -huh. um, and we would have a discussion about what we lawfully and appropriately can share with whom, but I would want to make sure that all the right people knew. I, I, I want to thank Senator Klobuchar for bringing up uh, hate crimes. Um, this is what former FBI, uh, former Director Comey explained uh, what hate, about hate crimes. He said they're different from other crimes because they, quote, strike at the heart of one's identity. They strike at our sense of self, our sense of belonging. The end result is loss of trust, is loss, loss of trust, loss of dignity, and in the worst case, loss of life. In my view, that loss of dignity is a part of what makes hate crimes so pernicious. When an act of violence is motivated by hate against a, a particular group, properly identifying that act as a hate crime and prosecuting it as such can go a long way to restoring that dignity. But hate crimes are often underreported, both by victims and by state and local law enforcement. In part, that's because the federal hate crime law does not require state and local police departments to report incidents to the FBI, so there's often little incentive to do that. But recently, an investigation by journalists revealed that at least 120 federal agencies are not uploading information about the hate crimes that they investigate and prosecute into the FBI's database. In fact, even the FBI isn't recording all of the hate crimes it investigates into its own database, and that, to me, is a problem. We need accurate data about the scope of the challenge uh, in order to appropriately direct prevention enforcement resources, but we can't do that if we don't know how many incidents there are or where they have taken place. If, Mr. Ray, if the federal government isn't even keeping accurate data in its own databases, how can we expect state and local police departments to step up? Well, Senator, I, I share your concern about the need for accurate data. Um, <clears throat> I'm not familiar with exactly how the reporting system works or, as you're describing, maybe doesn't work uh, right now, but it's something I would look forward to learning more about and drilling down on and trying to figure out how it can be done better. Uh, would you commit to me to uh, just help address this problem and uh, work to improve reporting by state and, and uh, local entities of uh, the number of hate crimes that they are, are dealing with. Well, I, I would commit to taking a hard look at the issue early in my tenure and looking for ways that we could work together on the issue. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Ray, I, I have been very impressed uh, with our meeting. I've been impressed with your uh, testimony here today. Uh, you've come here at a hard time. This is uh, under very extraordinary circumstances, um, and uh, I thank you for your willingness to take on this job. And um, uh, I, you know, I'm looking around. I'm feeling that uh, you've had a good hearing today, and um, uh, best of luck to you, sir. Thank you, Senator. That means a lot, Senator Kennedy.